All right. Um, can we get Justin Levine in from the Puck Authority, please? Hey, Hillary. Thank you so much for doing this. So that play where uh, Matty, uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong with the last name here and saying it, uh, Rofels, uh, what's credited for the goal. You're seeing the puck really well in that play. Can you kind of describe the process of, you know, uh, trying to get the puck in the net uh, yourself? And um, again, you were, you did point towards her afterwards, uh, you know, initiating that she had it, but, you know, can you take me uh, just through that play in general? Yeah. Um, so we were looking for sort of low walkout plays and Maddie had an opportunity with the puck uh, below the goal line and spun around. Um, and then I saw it clip off of something, but it was still heading towards the net. And um, I know that that's sort of just like a scrum. So you always follow the puck in and, um, you know, after it hit a skate, I knew it was essentially going in because that's a really hard play for the goalie to um, defend, um, especially when our feet are set trying to play that spinorama move. So um, we got lucky. It went off of one of their defenseman skates and I don't know, I was just following it in. It went in, you never know when it's going to go in, but um, yeah. So that's why I pointed at her. Cause I was like, no, you got it. You got it. Cause I think she thought I got a tip of it. Thank you. By the way, it's her, it's, it was her first game back with us. So it's a probably her first or second shot on that. So that's pretty incredible, incredible that feat right there. Impressive. I did yeah. see it first. Thank you. Can we get Catherine from She Scores Media, please? Hi, Hillary. Thank you so much. Um, the Dream Gap Tour was created to highlight the disparity between men's and women's professional hockey. How are conversations about gender inequality in hockey changing with the PWHPA playing games again, um, and especially on NBCSN and with the support of NHL teams? Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right of what's sort of started the PWHPA. Um, you know, there's a huge disparity right now, and we're doing our part as players, as a collection of players to to move the needle forward uh, and create more opportunities. And when a club like the Blackhawks or the Rangers or the Toronto Maple Leafs or Calgary Flames, I mean, you name it, gets involved and sees value in what you're doing, it creates more opportunities. And tonight was a, a great testament to that, being on a broadcast. Uh, and, you know, I think many, many amazing more opportunities to come. This is only, we're only just scratching the surface right now. So very excited for the, the progress that the PWHPA has made, the commitment that the players have made, our volunteers, our staff, everyone is working so hard to create more opportunities in the sport and when club support comes in and values those uh, those efforts it's tremendous where the sport can go thank you so much power from the ice garden please hi hillary thank you for taking the time to speak with us this afternoon uh, we saw earlier this week, uh, Kendall Coyne Schofield was a co-owner of the Red Stars. That was announced. Do you think maybe if you look at the NWSL with Angel City FC and now the Red Stars, a group of owners coming together to, to you know, be involved with ownership with a team, do you think that's a formula, uh, a sort of recipe that could we could see in women's hockey to try and get you know one league uh, going forward? Do you think maybe that needs to be a, a firm standing of a league before that can happen. I think it's a combination of both. You have to have the healthy ownership group to be able to commit to something long-term and make sure that the club support and the, the, the club that they're getting involved in um, is going to be sustainable. And I think that's what we've been missing on the women's ice hockey side for many years. We've never had it um, to that extent. So it's really encouraging to see the NWSL have so much success. Um, wonderful that Kendall is part of the ownership group, Chicago. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's amazing. Um, so we'll have to see how the future shakes out for women's professional ice hockey. But um, yeah, I, I think it would be a healthy combination of both, but you know, make no mistake about it, it's an expensive sport, right? So to be able to tap into these shared services, to have club level um, buy-in is, is instrumental to moving the sport forward. So it's going to be a, a combination if I had to put my, uh, my dream glasses on it and fast forward a little bit. Thank you very much. Good luck. Can we get David from the Puck Authority, please? Hey, Hillary, thanks for doing this. Uh, I just wanted to know, oh, is there anyone in particular that's really been standing out to you so far on your team that maybe isn't getting as much uh, attention? Ooh, um, that's a tough one. You know, I think Danny Cameron Easy um, definitely steps up in big moments and isn't necessarily the, the top of mind player um, to make the flashy plays, but, but um, she's a 
tremendous force out there and momentum shifter. And uh, yeah, you should definitely look out for number 24 every time she's on the ice. Okay, we've got time for a couple more questions. So we'll go to Mike Murphy from the Ice Garden. Hey, Hillary, congrats on the win. Um, it's one of those things where I think, you know, there's all the extra focus, of course, on what, you know, the extra point on the line, if there's a shutout, and then, you know, they score with 10 seconds left, and, you know, your heart just breaks for Nicole because she was so great in the game. But she made a lot of just really big saves. I mean, uh, Amanda made a great move. And, you know, a highlight reel deke and then Hensley closed the door and, you know, she made save after save after save in this one. And it feels like it's almost uh, unfair in a way that she doesn't get the shutout and the extra point. But can you talk about how great she was, uh, you know, just early on with the power play opportunities she faced and coming up big. And then, of course, you know, the shutout slipping out of her grasp there in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised by Nicole Hensley's performance whatsoever. She's one of the best goaltenders in the world, and she can definitely steal a game. Um, so, yes, it's heartbreaking that we could not pull out a shutout for her because um, she deserved it. But um, the way she was moving around um, in the net was incredible, just putting pucks aside always. So that's always easier to play in front of her um, when she, she's shutting it all down behind us. So. Um, wonderful talent. I mean, I think she's, you know, probably in the same sentence as someone who's underrated um, to a lot of people who might not be familiar with her. She's a phenomenal goalie and a phenomenal talent who's been uh, backing us up for a very, very long time and making sure we're putting our best foot forward on the, on the front end. But um, yeah, I, the rules are different, right? That's what makes them unique. And we were definitely going for the extra point and it, and it bit us at the end with 10.7 seconds left. And, um, you know, that's a little heartbreaking for Nicole, but we're hungry going into the next game tomorrow. All right, thanks so much, appreciate it. Okay, we have time for two more questions. So can we get Justin Levine from Puck Authority, please? Hey, Hillary, I had one more question for you. So, um, you know, you look at last year's Dream Gap Tour, then how this year is a little bit different and actually starting in the United States. And so you've done uh, New York slash New Jersey with MSG. Then you're now you've got Chicago with uh, United Center. Where would you like to see this tour take you next? And uh, would your hometown be up for consideration, maybe? My hometown. <laughs> I would love to play in my hometown. However, um, you know, I, I, wouldn't it be cool to go back to St. Louis? I mean, that would be, that would be epic. We had the all-star game there last year, the women's three on three, um, phenomenal building, phenomenal fan base. They're really growing women's ice hockey from the grassroots level all the way up and have been great supporters. Um, so that would be on my dream list of next stops, but, um, you know, this year's been different, right? I, I think we just started at the end of February. Uh, we're used to starting in the fall, so we're running out of weekends in the same breath. But to have sponsors and partners step up like Secret and put on the Dream Gap Tour and get these games on the schedule is is amazing for the sport. And to have the visibility of NBC Sports um, step up and broadcast is phenomenal. All women broadcast, let alone, um, you know, we're making history in Women's History Month. So a lot of good things coming. But if I had to say where I would love to play next, it would be St. Louis. Um, but hopefully Sun Valley, Idaho is, is in the mix at some point. Good choice. Thank you. Okay, last question. David from the Puck Authority, please. Uh, hey, Hillary, to build off of my last question regarding if there's anyone on your own team um, that people should be keeping an eye on, what about the other team? Going into tomorrow's game, is there anyone who uh, you and your teammates really uh, are focused on, you know, making sure you're containing out there? Um, I mean, yeah, you just want to shut, shut the other team down, right? Um, so, you know, Dex is a strong centerman. Um, Megan Keller can rush the puck equally be offensive as she is defensive. Um, so that's difficult at times, but, uh, yeah, it, going against Rigsby tonight, it was difficult. Um, she turned away a lot of, a lot of pucks as well, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to look to really lock in and come out with a fresh start tomorrow and, um, put more pucks on net. Great. Thanks, Hillary. Thank you guys.